double dog dare you to say that at the next prayer meeting. Wait till everyone is done praying and you're getting there. And instead of saying, amen, you say. Hey, hey, so why do we make this hard? Of course, when I'm saying we, I mean me. And this thing, why do we make this hard? This prayer thing. Do we really need a checklist or an app or some kind of prayer prompt or, you know, anything like that? And I'm not dissing these things. They're helpful. But think about it this way. Do you need a husband wristband to remind you to tell your husband how your day was? Do you ask him what his plans for tomorrow are, or do you need a prompt to remind you to do that? This is the starting place of prayer, and it's amazing and exciting, and it's a huge rush, well, for me. Um, Psalm 116.2 in the New Living Translation says, Because he bends down and listens to me, I will pray as long as I have breath. Can't you just see it? It's the absolute picture of a dad dropping to one knee, coming to their dear child's level. Because, you know, it's hard for his child to look up that long, and there's no way a child can make eye contact with a dad who's that tall. So dad comes low, not so he can hear and see, but so his child can look directly into his father's face. Did I mention this father we're talking about is the king of the universe? And that, pray as long as I have breath, that's literally talk. Talk as long as I have breath. Oh, and you know, that includes talking as in thinking, like you think something and you're thinking, oh, Lord, help me with this. And writing the words, like journaling. It's crying the words, creating the words with an art journal. Every form of communication with God has been given. And it counts. It counts every time we begin to think and address and consider and say, Oh, Lord, help what is going on. Tell me something. It counts every little bit. Speaking of king of the universe, as well as creator of the universe, talk about networking. It's no joke. The creator is the go-to guy. Jeremiah 33, thir, three, thir, listen to me. 33, three says, God has an open door policy. It says, call to me in prayer and I will answer you. I will show you great and mysterious things which you still do not know about. And that's the New Living Translation, I think, but I'm not sure. It might be the NET. I'll, I'll post it in the show notes below. But yeah, Google thinks it has all the answers. No. The first part of that verse, call to me in prayer. That means talk to me. Ask me your questions. I've got all the answers, and you don't even have the questions yet to the answers that I have. So, are you stressing about prayer life? Think your prayers are just hitting the ceiling and then crashing to the floor? They're not. That's not what God is saying. 
That's what you're thinking. The truth is, it's not your quote unquote prayer life. What we think of as prayer is a real, ongoing, talking, sharing, listening conversation. It has no end, and it has really no stopping point. It's the relationship that's the focus, not the prayer. Instead of prayer apps and prompts and prayer plans, I want to talk and listen to this person. This person who is the king and creator of the universe and yet gets down on one knee so I can see his face, so I can know he's listening to me. I want to tell him all about my day, even though we walked through it together. It's kind of like talking about that great concert with your best friend that you went to. It's like reliving it together, laughing about the guy dancing like no one was watching and then admitting you were both doing the same thing and talking about how dark it was going back to the car after the concert and how thankful you were when you finally got inside the car safely. And knowing, really knowing, He's never going to ignore you. He's never going to be angry with you. And he's always, always going to be with you. Here's a little side note for you that's kind of funny. That word, amen, amen, A-M-E-N, yeah, it's said at the end of a prayer, you know, so if you're at a prayer meeting or you're in Sunday school or, you know, maybe you're even praying by yourself and you, you get to what you have considered is the end and you're letting everyone know I'm done praying and you say, amen, well, you're not going to believe this. The word amen actually means you ready for it? Believe or so be it. And there's a whole lot of other things that this word in the Hebrew can mean. The actual Hebrew word is A-M-A-M. Amam. Amam. I, I don't know. I can't, you know, I have trouble with these Hebrew words and all of these other things. But it wasn't spoken by the person that was praying. It was said by the people that were there and what they were doing was agreeing with what was prayed, or they were agreeing with the person that was talking to God on behalf of them, or talking to God with them, and they were agreeing. So here's the funny part. This is a real kicker. A modern translation of the word amen is for sure. Yeah, I double dog dare you to say that at the next prayer meeting. Wait till everyone is done praying and you're getting there. And instead of saying, amen, you say, for sure. Yeah, I can just see the looks. Maybe maybe you shouldn't do that. Probably, I, I take the challenge back. You probably shouldn't do that. But just know every time you hear amen, it means agreeing. And it means believing. And it means utter confidence and faith in what was said. So, If you're thinking that your prayer life is a shambles and it's not working and nothing is happening, stop thinking of it as quote unquote prayer and just consider a relationship and a conversation with someone that loves you more than you will ever know and getting to know that person for who they are 
how they respond to you, what they want for you, and this magnitude of joy and grace and love that they have for you. Have that conversation. And don't worry about the checklists and the wristbands and the prompts. Now, I will admit, I do totally love journaling creatively my prayers. And I will continue to do this and writing my prayers. But when I'm doing these, I'm having a conversation. I'm not having a checklist. So maybe you've been there. Maybe you have this whole, I'm not getting this right. My prayers are not getting anywhere. This is just not working. Well, take the pressure off. And remember, you're just talking to someone like your best friend, your husband, your mom. That's all you're doing. And share everything that's on your heart. And listen as he turns around and shares everything that's on his heart.